This video is going to cover a couple of ways to prepare data to create a progression map. For more information, please refer to the GISS workflow site. In the Create Incident Maps and Digital Products section, on the Master Projects page, there is an expandable section for the progression map and a job aid document that covers the methods I'm going to demo, plus two additional methods not covered in the video. The first method I'm going to demo involves stacking your exported perimeter polygons. I've got my fire perimeter polygons exported to the Progression Geo database, and the first item to check is that all of my perimeters are stored in the same projected coordinate system. Next, I'll check to see if I need to do any clipping. It's possible on day two to receive intel from the field that corrects the perimeter from day one. In this example, it looks like it was determined that the fire did not cross the 760 road and we want that to be reflected on the progression map. So using the clip geoprocessing tool, I'll correct this by clipping the first perimeter to the second perimeter. Save the output feature class to the progression geo database. This represents a corrected version of the June 5th perimeter. I'll repeat that same process for all of my perimeter exports. Next, I'll add the perimeters to the contents pane using corrected perimeters where applicable. Add all perimeters to a group layer. The name of the group layer is not important. Symbolize each perimeter with a different color ranging from cool for older perimeters to warm for more recent perimeters. Add transparency to the group layer of perimeters so that you can see the terrain underneath. Next, add a field to each perimeter export called prog date. Then enter the date that the perimeter represents. Use the prog date attribute to label each perimeter on the map to help the reader better interpret the fire progression. If you clipped any perimeters, be sure to recalculate acres in the attribute table. Update the symbology properties for each perimeter export and include a label for the legend that is easier to understand than the feature class file name. Next, I'll add a layout. I'll turn off the base data that's taken up all this legend here, and then I'll zoom to my progression polygons. I'll adjust the extent of the map ever so slightly. And I'll update my map metadata to include a title, date, and credits.
That's all there is to the stacking method. The next method I'll demo is using a custom tool called Create Fire Progression from the Penun Tools toolbox developed by Matt Penunto. I have the tool downloaded to my tools folder from Matt's GitHub site, and the Create Fire Progression tool lives in the Daily Workflow toolset. I'm creating this progression output feature class for the first time, so I'll select New. Then I'll navigate to my progression geodatabase. Now this tool is going to create a single feature class that represents the fire progression over various burn periods. I'm going to keep that output feature class separate from my input perimeters. So I've created a progression output folder to avoid confusion. I'll choose my local projected coordinate system and specify the geodesic measurement type. Run the tool and view details to follow along with what the tool is doing. Unlike the stacking method, you don't have to do any prep work like clipping. The tool adds attribute fields to the perimeter export feature classes in the progression geodatabase and populates them based on the file names of the feature classes. If needed, it projects the feature classes and clips them to the following day's perimeter. Then it creates polygons representing just the growth for a given burn period and merges them together into a single feature class. I'll add the output feature class from my progression output folder. Note that the geodatabase and feature class created have the date and time stamp of when you ran the tool, not the date and time of the latest fire perimeter. Change the symbology to unique values and pick an attribute field to symbolize on. I'll pick prog legend 4. Pick a color ramp that symbolizes older perimeters in cooler colors and more recent perimeters in warmer colors. The Prog Legend 4 attribute is nice because it displays both the total acres and growth acres by date. Add transparency to the progression output feature class to see the terrain underneath. Then label the output feature class based on the date to help the reader better interpret the fire progression. Back on the layout, I've got a nice legend that matches the burn period polygons on the map and displays total and growth acres by date. Thanks for watching and thanks to Matt for developing and sharing the Create Fire Progression tool.